<clears throat> oh, you're there. Well, welcome back. Uh, I'm going to be making a new video today, but first of all, I want to say thanks for, for sticking around. I have been taking a bit of a break, but the good news is I've got a bunch of new ideas for videos. In this video, I'm going to be going back to basics and talking about sessions versus catalogs and which one you should use and why. So, right after this. Right after this. Uh, all right, one second. So let's get started. Uh, this is Capture One, and at the moment I've got a catalog open. Now in Capture One you can choose, when you create a new um, thing, you can choose either a new catalog or a new session. Now if you hover over this for a moment, you get a little hint from Capture One on what this is for. A catalog is the best place to store and organize your entire image library. To work with images in a catalog, they need to be imported by the catalog, recommended for most photographers. And for a session, wait a moment, a session is a quick and lightweight way to work with a limited number of images for a single job or event. Images can be edited by browsing to the location on disk and or by importing them into a session. So they see that the difference is at a high level, catalogs are for longer term projects and sessions are for short term uh, events or jobs. At least that's what Capture One is the you know the, the writers of Capture One, the developers have prescribed for us. That's what their intentions are for using catalogs versus sessions. So let's talk about catalogs first. So if you've used other image management tools in the past, like Lightroom or Aperture, then the Capture One catalog is probably going to be the most similar to what you are used to. It has a central database, if you will, uh, that stores all of the information about images that have been imported into the catalog. For example, noticed here in the catalog, in this catalog, that I've got several folders that have been added to this catalog with images in it. Now I'm going to right click this and show in the finder, in the actual folder, and we see that the Central Park folder is here with images, with raw images, but there's other image folders here with, or such as Candid's, that are not in the catalog, at least not here in this folder section. So when we're looking at these folders, these are only the images and folders that have been imported or added to the catalog. They're not everything that's actually available in the file system. For this tutorial, of course, I only imported a couple of these folders to show you that there's a difference there. Now, another thing about catalogs is there are actually two ways you can manage images in the catalog. The first way is this way I'm already showing you, which is you can manage files in regular folders on your computer and import that structure into Capture One. Or you can copy files from a card and create that structure using Capture One. Very similar again to how uh, Lightroom works. The other way you can manage files is by storing them in the catalog. So this would maybe copying files from a card, but instead of creating a new folder to store them in with structured by date or project name or however you want to manage your folders, you're just putting them into a catalog in basically one big pool of images. So if you're going to be doing this, which is a you know, different style of image management, then you're definitely going to be wanting to take advantage of all of the user collections that Capture One provides. And you can create albums and projects and groups and using for example, here is the way for creating albums and smart albums. Now I'm already inside a project, so you can't create a new project, but you can see you can create all of these things here in collections. So, and you can also create these albums that include images from both the, that are stored in the catalog and stored in regular folders. As far as the session, or the, sorry, the catalog is concerned, it doesn't matter where images are actually stored. They're all going to be available here in these collections. So here's the Candids album, and here's the dance from down here, and so on. As a little side note, these albums don't necessarily have to line up with actual folders. For example, in the Central Park, you see I've got several images of skaters, and then down here there's another album with the skaters, and it's the same images. They're not duplicated on the, in any folder. They're simply showing up in multiple collections here in this section of Capture One. So these are a convenient way to manage files and put them in different categories and, and put them in different folders. So there's lots of organization features here that are in catalogs. 
Now, in particular, the ability to create projects and then groups of projects or groups of albums are specific to catalogs. Sessions don't have those. You can only create albums, as we'll get to in a moment. So that pretty much covers everything about catalogs that are different here with file management. Before we move over to sessions, I want to point out that all of the other tools are the same in both uh, sessions and catalogs. And you get the same image quality, the same image editing possibilities, and the ability to export through recipes. Those are all the same in both sessions and catalogs. So I won't really be referring to those in this tool. It's In this talk, it's really about the image management. So let's switch over to the session that I've got set up. So here is a session. Now sessions are almost the, and when it comes to image management, sessions are almost the opposite to catalogs. Sessions are entirely folder based. So images are stored in folders on your computer and sessions don't change that. They use them exactly where they are on the computer. It's actually similar to say Adobe Bridge or maybe Photo Mechanic in that you can browse through all the folders on your computer and look for images and edit them where they are. However, there's also another aspect of sessions that when you create a session, it also creates four folders for you that are part of that session and are sort of associated with that session uh, document as it's created. I'm going to actually, so in the session, we see there's a capture, selects, output, and trash actual folders, which correspond to the session folders inside the session. And in the capture, there's all the raw images and so on. But in addition to that, we can also see, and now actually I'm going to show in library and show that, so now we're actually browsing the computer's folders directly that are on the computer. And we can look at these images that we saw in the catalog just showing up here in the browser. So we can edit all of these images. Now, I wouldn't recommend doing that necessarily, but just showing you that how sessions work and how there's no need to import sessions in import images rather into a session like you have to do in a catalog. However, let's talk about a few other things before we get further. So I want to point out that the way these are set up, this is an ideal solution for using with tethering. If you're tethering with it in your sessions, I definitely recommend using a capture one session to manage your tethering work. The capture folder is by default exactly where everything's going to be going to whenever you can tether a computer images are going to go always to the capture folder. That's and you always know where that is. It's right here in a session folder. This is by by definition, always going to be wherever images are going when they're captured. Uh, and then this, there's actually a hot a hot key to move images into the selects folder. The output folder is the default destination for all of the recipes. So when you run recipe to export images, they're always going to show up in the output folder by default. So now there's one other thing that's different here than in a catalogers. So, so now here's session albums, which in these case, these are smart albums that are that came with the session. So there's a five star and an all images. You can also create new custom albums here, uh, like a regular album, but you cannot create projects or groups like you can in a catalog. So the organizational features are a little bit limited in a session. Now let's talk about session favorites. This is something that isn't in a catalog and I'll show you what's going on here. So I'm gonna go back to the finder and I'm just gonna drag this folder over here and put it into favorites. Now what's happened is session, this session is now added the, the images that are in this favorite folder, central parks, to all of the images that the session is aware of. So notice I'm looking at the all images smart album and all of the images that are in that central park folder have been added to all images. So if I go to five stars, well, there's no five stars in that image in that folder. So if I go to five stars, then it'll pull in this, this one image from central park in there as well. So by adding things to favorites, you are adding, it's kind of like importing images into the session, but it's not moving the images and it's not changing how the images are being managed. It's really just putting this as a, almost like a bookmark to that session, but it's also including it in the session albums. For example, you can take the same folder and add it as a favorite to multiple sessions. So if you have a, a group of images as a reference images, perhaps, and you want to see that in other sessions, you can add that as your session favorite into all of your sessions and be able to see those images in all those sessions without having to duplicate them. 
um, now one thing to be aware of, if you make any changes to the image in one of the sessions, then you'll see that in all the other sessions that might be referencing that one, that folder. So the changes made in a session will be visible to others. Which brings me to the next difference between sessions and catalogs. When you make adjustments to an image, Capture One is never going to be modifying the original image, the raw file or the JPEG or whatever the image is that you're using or looking at in Capture One. It will never change that image other than, I guess, the file name, which it does change. But nothing else in the actual image itself will be touched by Capture One. Whenever you adjust the exposure or make any other adjustments through the tools in Capture One, it's saving that adjustment someplace else. Um, so, And that is different between sessions and catalogs. In a session, those changes are made in the folder where the image is. It's actually in another subfolder called Capture One. You've probably noticed that there's a Capture One subfolder in a bunch of your image folders, and they have a cache folder and a settings folder. This is where Capture One is storing settings and also the previews and thumbnails of images when you're using a session. And so it's a good idea to remember, if you're going to be moving these files somewhere else and you want to keep the work that you did in Capture One, make sure that this folder, the Capture One folder, stays with these images. It's best to just copy it from this, this level. Now, in a catalog, the catalog is storing all of the adjustments you make to, to files inside the database of the catalog. So even if you import a file that had been originally edited in a session, it will bring in all of the changes made in the session and use that in the catalog. But at that point, the connection with the original changes made to the file is severed. And you, in a catalog, you will only be making changes to the file inside the catalog. If you look at the same file outside in, say, another Capture One session, then you won't see any of the changes that have been made in the catalog. And the other way around as well, if you continue to make changes in that file in a session, you won't see those changes in a catalog because Capture One is storing those adjustments in totally different ways between catalogs and sessions. So if you're working with a session and want to migrate that work into a catalog by importing a session, which you can do with a file import session option, then which I'm not going to go into that here, that's another video. But if you do that, make sure that you are done with the session and you don't want to edit the files anymore through the session and you want to switch over to the catalog because you really, uh, it's not easy to go back to a session. It is possible to export images, but it's, a, like I said, another video. So which one should you use, catalogs or sessions? Well, it really depends on what you're doing. I definitely prefer to use sessions for almost all of the work that I do for a client. A portrait session in studio, if it's an on-location job for groups or for a dance school, I'm going to create one session for that job and put all of the work into that session. And I have another video actually about, actually a couple of videos on how I create sessions for those kinds of jobs. It's over here, one of my earlier videos in my series. Now for catalogs, for me, I tend to use catalogs for long-term projects or for managing multiple projects in one place. For personal work, like family photos and so on, I just dump those in a catalog. In fact, I use the in-catalog storage option, so I don't have to worry about folders. I just throw it all in there, and someday I'll go over them and pull out the nice images for the rest of the family to see, maybe. But personal projects, I have another catalog for all of that work. Different ongoing projects are just all stored in there, and that way I can see how different work relates to each other and maybe pull together things from different projects into one uh, other kind of uh, project or maybe turn that into some other something else. Maybe it goes into a book or a website or who knows what, but it allows me to see everything all in the one time. So catalogs are good for that kind of thing. So that's the story on sessions and catalogs. Which one you use really comes down to how you want to organize your images, how you want to organize your work. Uh, unless you're tethering and then you want to use a session. That's it for today. Uh, I'm Robert Reed. Thanks for watching. As I said in the beginning, I appreciate all the likes and subscribes I was getting even while I was taking time off. But there'll be a lot more videos coming soon and I'll see you next time.